Hey guys, Kyle here, and today we are going to be going over damage indicators. I haven't made a separate video on it, so that's what this is for. Uh, it's actually a pretty simple concept, and it shouldn't take too long to explain. Now, as you can see, there's an item behind me, and it's named high, but how can we make it say something like how much damage I did? Um, well, that's actually pretty simple once you understand JSON and you understand data modify. I have some separate videos on it, but uh, I'll be covering it briefly here. So you want to have a sign somewhere dedicated in your world. Uh, you can, it, you want to have a dedicated one. It's the most efficient method. Uh, and when you put down a sign that has, and oh, hold up with me, don't get confused. Okay, so I'm going to set the block there to oak sign. I'm going to give it this data. Let me change this to test. And let's change this to at P just so that we can not confuse anybody. All right, so you see kind of a minus, so scoreboard objectives to the sidebar, test. Uh, scoreboard objectives add test dummy. Okay, so you're going to need a scoreboard, and then you're going to need to do a value on it. So I'm going to put a value, and now when I play that command, um, you can go to a sign generator. There's a sign generator website. Um, you can Google search them, um, but you want to put some text on it. And mine has a minus symbol because I want to show like minus damage and I made it red. Um, but the key part here is that it's going to take the nearest player's objective of test. So when I put that, it says my number right there. Uh, and it'll be anything. But keep in mind, so when I put test in the sidebar, uh, if I change the number, the sign doesn't update. So I have to reset the sign. Um, and I can't set block. So this is where the data merge comes in. So if I want to update it, I have to do data merge block. And really, I just need that. Um, and then I just need the all of the MBT associated, which is this curly brace stuff. So if I do that, it'll update very easy. So if I change my score, this is going to need to update. That's pretty simple. So we're going to throw that into our list of commands. So this needs to happen. And for a single player map, that'll be fine, but we'll cover some multiplayer methods eventually. All right, so now I just need to get that uh, number onto this guy. So that's actually pretty simple. We do data modify entity at E type equals item limit equals one because you can only do one at a time. Um, so we're going to change this entity's data. What data are we going to change? We're going to change its custom name. And what are we going to do? We're going to set it from, so we're going to put something else's data there, and we're going to put it from that block at that coordinates, and we're going to take its text one. And when we do that, now it says 420. Awesome. So that's our next command. And we throw it onto the stack. And this is kind of how I work at these things. I've known this for a long time. I did this, I actually did this exact thing a very long time ago. So I'm basically just repeating my steps from about a year and a half ago. Um, anyways, so now that we have that, um, we're pretty much done. Now we just have to make it more uh, variable because obviously when I click this, it's just going to set it to that. So scoreboard players, players set uh, add, add s test one. So we'll just uh, go like that. So now when I click it uh, at P, we're in command blocks. So when I click it, it will update based off of, uh, let's see, did that modify? Oh, okay, so then I encounter another bug. So this is bug number two. Um, if you want to update, you either need a new item, uh, which again, you're going to want to put custom name visible on, or you're going to need to clear it. So there's a weird kind of bug, but it has to do with how JSON is processed. Um, but essentially, the dynamic name that you're copying uh, doesn't want to update for efficiency purposes. So it just stays the same unless you delete the name and put it back on. Uh, lucky for us, we only want to show it for a brief second. So we're going to just you move on anyways. But that's something to keep in mind if you want to use this on something else. Um, so anyway, so first we need to summon this uh, item. So we're going to do execute at at p run summon item all right and we're going to summon it about 1.5 so a little bit in your head and we're going to add pickup delay 100 
Then we're going to put an age of very, very high because 6,000 is when the item despawns. So we're going to put 59... Uh, 60. So then it'll last maybe four seconds. Okay, so you can do these calculations. Uh, no, two seconds. All right. And then we're going to do custom name visible 1B custom name. And we're going to actually give it one already. And this name is going to be just null. So then if you see null, you know there's some kind of bug happening. All right. And then we're going to have to make it an actual item. So we're just going to go with a button. You can untexture it if you want to make this look a bit, a bit better. Uh, or you can use a different item that you're willing to untexture. And we need a count of one. And boom. Okay. So now when I click this, you're going to see like a little null pop up and it'll eventually disappear. So obviously that was way too long. So this is where we basically just adjust this value. So I think 5990 is good enough. So if I hit the button, the null just comes up for a little bit. And it's not perfect because, again, we want it to fly upwards. So now we're going to give it some motion. So we're going to go 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.05. All right. So now you kind of see the number fly up and off. And you can randomize this value, look up other tutorials, or you can like have like a set of list of values that it picks from and then just add one and pick a one. And that's pretty random. Uh, but anyways, so after we summon it, we're going to want to edit its info. Okay. And then after we edit its info, get the score, then we want to put it onto it. All right. So now when I click this, or I guess for our purposes of, I can't see what's going on. We'll just use this. All right. So now you can see it says the number just like that. And you can see null flash for a second. Um, you can remove the whole null thing so that you don't see that flash. Um, it's just there for testing purposes. Um, but yeah, you can, you can get rid of, you can just make it blank, uh, and then it, you won't see anything. So if you want to, you can just remove the null, but it's good for testing purposes. Cause if you want to see if it's not putting any numbers, so that would be great. But if we have multiple items, it breaks. So this is where we make it safe. So we're going to make it safe and multiplayer friendly. So we're going to give this guy a new tag called new. Okay. So now it has a tag of new, so I can pick it as new as long as I remove that new tag. So at the end, we want to do tag at e tag equals new, remove new. And for efficiency, we're going to say type equals item. All right. So we have new and then it's no longer new at the end. So now we're going to change this to say tag equals new. So if I have say an item over here, it's not going to change its name. It's just going to keep changing this guy's name or sorry, I kind of did a brain fart there. All right. So there you go. I just moved the sign location. All right. So now only the new thing and not the one on the ground. And lastly, this is the final efficiency. Um, and this is where you take it to a data pack. So, okay. So I dragged everything into the uh, file and it's as follows. So it's just copied and pasted directly. Now this is where we make it multiplayer friendly. We do tag at s add this, and we make this do tag equals this. Okay, tag at s remove this. Okay, so now basically like this tag is only applied to the player who this is run at. Therefore, it only picks the score from the player who this is run at. And then the tag is immediately removed. So it's consistent for the next player. And after doing that, you are basically done. Just change this test to whatever score you want and you have your damage indicator. So function test indicator and boom, it just kind of flies up and does the damage pretty much perfectly. And you can adjust, you can like have multiple of these summons um, to have different motion or you can randomize the motion on your own. Anyways, that's pretty much it guys. I'll link this uh, function file in the description. But other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.